This is probably going to be one of the most difficult videos that I think I've ever made here on the channel, um, just personally. So I'll go ahead and explain all that to you guys here as well. So let's get to it. By the way, this truck is mint. It has a little over 40,000 miles on it. I also have the sticker from the window from the dealership when my father-in-law purchased this truck. So I'm gonna go ahead and reveal the actual price of this truck back in 2005 when it was brand new. It'll blow your mind. So unexpectedly, my father-in-law passed away, my wife's dad, of course, and we were left with this truck. It's been in the family for a long time. He purchased it brand new from the Ford dealership. Some of my memories with this, when I was on leave from Iraq or something like that, deployments, I used to go to his house. He lives out in the country. We used to hang out, have bonfires, and we'd work on this truck in the barn. I remember we spent many hours on this thing. And obviously, what it looks like now looks totally different. Once his health started to plummet, the truck sat in the barn for many years. It really never ran. I'm sure he started it, but it didn't, it never hit the road. Um, we were able to rescue it, fired up. Here's a video of that right now. Mitchell, you think this thing hasn't been moved since, uh, you know? It hasn't been, it was in this spot when the house fire happened. So it's been about four years. Five yeah. years. Five years since this truck's moved out of the barn. Come on, girl. So of course after that I took it to my house, did some real major upgrades to it. I actually did the entire lift kit to Rough Country. We did the RC rear lift springs in the back. It was sitting on three blocks. And of course I went ahead and paint matched everything. All this was black, you know, the lower valence of the front bumper, of course, the cutout wheel flares. Um, did some boost auto parts tow mirrors. We did a RDS 64 and a half turbo right there in the valley, a nice Garrett turbo, sounds amazing. Of course, I know I'm missing a ton of stuff that I've done to this truck, but I really went through it, put some coin into it, made it nice. But at this point, we went ahead and sold the truck. So the truck no longer belongs to me. It belongs to one of my buddies. He went ahead and purchased it. And I'm really happy that he bought it because I could still see it. I could still get it here on the channel, but I'm no longer a Power Stroke owner. My wife was telling me this. She did not want to be in the video. She didn't want to explain this. It'd be really hard. Very emotional for her actually. And from 21 until present, the truck has just been sitting at my house. Yes, of course, I've been keeping up with the maintenance. I fire it up, I make sure it runs, but the truck isn't registered, so I can't just drive it on the road anytime I want to just to keep things moving. Another thing that I didn't do is I didn't put vehicle insurance on it because in the state of Michigan, especially with multiple vehicles, it costs so much money monthly just to have one vehicle on the road for vehicle insurance to keep it legal. So here's the biggest decision why the wife and I decided to go ahead and sell the truck. Last year, you've probably seen my son on the channel. I like to try to get him in the videos here and there to wrench with me. On a Saturday morning, we had a harvest festival at our church. We went ahead and headed out there. I had my oldest daughter watch him. He was sick. We had a pretty good time that afternoon. We came home and he was sitting there watching TV and my daughter was sitting right next to him doing exactly what she should have been doing. I truly believe that the Lord worked this timing out perfectly because when we got home, my wife walked in the living room to check on my son and he started freaking out. He actually had a seizure. My son is perfectly healthy. There's nothing wrong with him whatsoever, but we didn't know what was going on. We thought he was dying. It was by far one of the scariest moments and I don't want to get into the specifics of all of this as well, but I thought our son was going to die. I, I did not know what to do. 
I was just praying at that point. It's a pretty traumatic moment, but what does this event have to do with selling the power stroke? After he was rushed to the local hospital that we have, the local emergency room, he was then taken all the way to Ann Arbor to the U of M, University of Michigan Hospital, where they have a nice setup for children. And I knew at that point he was gonna be completely out of network with our insurance. And as far as I'm concerned as a dad, I didn't care what it took or how much money it would cost if we were out of network or not. I wanted him to have the best treatment, the best care possible to figure out what was going on with his brain, what was going on with him. So I knew in the back of my mind, once those medical bills came in, that it was gonna hit us like a ton of bricks. So at that point, I was talking to the wife and we decided to go ahead and just sell the truck. Now, as far as updates with my son, that was back in October last year. He's good to go now, no issues. We've been thinking about selling the truck for a long time, obviously, after that. And some of you guys know that I have this really expensive build going on in the background, what you're not seeing. It's the Sunkiss Duramax that we're building and how much money that costs. So you're probably wondering, why in the world are you blowing all this money when you have medical bills for your son? The insurance covered most of it. We really didn't spend much money on the bills that came back to our house. And this has been a while now. And I think so far we've already paid off most of those medical bills and they were pennies compared to what we thought we were going to. My son stayed in the hospital probably for about a week straight, just doing tests and trying to figure out what was going on. They did find two cysts on his brain. It can follow them the rest of their life and it'll never affect them. So I'm not saying that I'm not worried about it, but that's exactly what happened. Now, of course I could have kept the vehicle after all the medical bills were paid off and such, but we sort of already made our mind up on selling it. And not only that, it sits. It sits at the house. Usually it sits in the garage or it sits outside and then squirrels or mice get into it. Actually, uh, my buddy that purchased the truck, he removed the tail light and he had to replace all the wiring because a squirrel got back in the box there and chewed up everything. He had to replace all that. And not to mention, no offense to some of you Ford guys, but it's a, it's a 6 0 power stroke. It's not a very reliable diesel unless you, you know, I guess unless you bulletproof it. I don't even know what that means anymore because I know a lot of guys that stud these engines, uh, build the transmissions, all this other stuff, and they still have major issues. I love the thing to death and I hope it stays with him for a long time. And again, I know I'm gonna be able to get this thing on the channel eventually, but that's the story. That's why I sold it. That's my formal goodbye to the 6.0 Power Stroke. It's been fun, but it's going to be awesome to know that this truck is going to be used. But the updates on this thing, it's registered, it's insured, it's been on the road. He's been driving it quite a bit. He owns a construction company. He uses it also for work, which is pretty cool. So as promised, we'll go ahead and get into the sticker price on this truck. But the reason why I have it is because it's leaking oil. It wasn't leaking oil when I sold it, but in all fairness, it's been sitting for a long time after he's been driving it regularly. Now we're starting to see some issues with this truck. I'm gonna go ahead and diagnose the oil leak and figure out where it's coming from. I think I have an idea. Uh, I went ahead and power washed it yesterday and really cleaned all the engine oil up. I did end up driving it to the A&D repair shop this morning and then back. So, you know, it's like a 25 minute drive and we're already seeing drips on the ground. So I was kind of hoping it was just old residual oil. It was coming from the valley of the engine when I did the work to it, but unfortunately um, we got bigger issues. But after this video, I'm gonna be diagnosing this still. I'm gonna keep working on it. Hopefully it's something simple. Hopefully it's something easy. Guys, let me know in the comments what normally leaks on a Ford. Probably everything. <laughs> Notice there was some oil coming from the side of the valve cover, so I'm hoping it's just the valve cover gasket, but we are also having engine oil in the valley as well. So it could be a lot of other little issues. It's been sitting in the garage since I pulled it in, as you guys saw. And we have two little drops of engine oil on the ground already. But as promised, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the wheel and tire setup. So when he purchased the truck, he took off the old wheels and tires. They were old, the Nitto mud grapplers that were on it were actually weather checked. This is by far one of my favorite types of Nitto tire, the trail grapplers. And we are sitting on a set of 22 inch hostile rims, 40 by 15 and a half R22s. These are some big, big tires. So this is an eight inch lift kit on 40 inch wheels with some cutouts. And he did have to trim that up just a little bit, that bumper, because it was kissing the wheel. When he purchased the truck from me, he asked what is a good website to go to to buy wheels and tires. I told him to go to customoffsets.com and he bought that package. I think it was like, it was a little over three grand. Definitely pricey, but not too bad because it all comes mounted and balanced. It came to his house. All he had to do was put them on. It looks way better than the old setup. And just a quick recap here, like I said, manual everything, really not much there. I actually posted a short on my YouTube channel if you guys want to check it out. We have a manual transfer case, but it does not have a manual transmission. 
you never have to worry about electronics filling. That's one thing I love about rolling windows up and down. That's awesome. But yeah, we got a set of Vertex shocks on it. The dual stabilizers. Definitely needs an air filter or a cold air intake, should I say. I also installed a 6.7 liter Power Stroke starter. Two brand new batteries. So she fires right up, no problem. 2005 F350 4x4 regular cab with the eight foot bed. Nothing really special done to this truck. As a matter of fact, the floor is rubber. It's not even carpet. It's got a big old fuel tank though, 38 gallon fuel tank, um, bench seats. I mean, there's really not much to say about this thing. The overall cost for this manufacturer retails $26,210. Out the door, it came out to $36,745. Uh, nowadays, I can only imagine. Let us know in the comments what a basic plain Jane diesel truck would cost you nowadays. Just like this in this configuration. What are you thinking guys, $50,000, $55,000? It's crazy, back in 2005, that was a lot of money. Obviously that price reflects the 2005 market. back to my talk about if you inherited something from your family when they passed away that you weren't really expecting and then you felt terrible for selling it that's kind of where I'm at but at the same time we got to do what's best for us and our family and not to mention this is just a thing it's just a vehicle it's gonna rust and rot away one day you can't take this stuff with you when you die I guess that's kind of where I'm getting at it's just a thing now, as far as the other build that I have going I had a budget I still have a budget on that I have that locked in it's good to go believe it or not I really haven't spent too much on it I can't wait to reveal the budget for that truck how much I spent total on it not to mention uh, A&D repair those guys the paint body shop there in Haslett are helping me out tremendously so I want to give a big shout out to them as well but uh, stay tuned for those updated videos I can't wait to get to them they're super busy at the shop so it's kind of hard to uh, get back to the truck just like any project goes it's gonna take time we can't rush this stuff at the end of the day I know it's gonna be worth the big reveal so subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the channel you're really missing out and do me another favor on your way out hit the like button for me I really would appreciate it now given the fact that the truck is leaking most likely it's because it's been sitting one of the worst things you guys can do is let a vehicle sit especially a diesel engine sit for a prolonged period of time I mean that's just the nature of the beast with these trucks let them sit for a long time they're eventually gonna start leaking when you start driving them again things need to get replaced seals dry up that's just how it goes this was a video that I was planning on just not making and just going through the motions posting videos and not talking about what the heck happened to the 6.0 Power Stroke. So that's kind of the explanation of this video. One of the biggest suggestions from my wife when we decided to sell the rig was to sell it to somebody who we know. I think that meant more to her is the fact that it's being used and that it may stay local. Um, what he does after this, that's his business but I know that he'll probably keep it for a while, so that's kinda neat. But again, stay tuned for the progress builds on Sunkist. Can't wait for it to be done. I hope you guys enjoy the videos. We'll see you on the next one. Stay tuned.